Many people ask me if you need to know how to code to use Houdini or if it's too hard without technical skills. Today, I'm going to show you a workflow to use Houdini for complex tasks without coding. Before beginning, you need to understand that Houdini is a node based 3D software where each node performs a specific operation on 3D data. Nodes can be connected to create complex 3D scenes. There are some nodes where you can write custom code called VEX. But if you don't want to code, you can use a type of node container called a VOP node instead. It's similar to Blender using new geometry nodes or Unreal Engine using blueprints if you're familiar with either of those software packages. And VOP nodes are pre-coded containers that perform the same VEX functions without requiring you to write any code. All right, so in a blank session of Houdini, what I'm gonna do is drop down our little pig head test geometry here, okay? So let's dive right in here. Again, we have a node and we want to do a certain operation on it. So maybe first off, what we'll do is just subdivide this. I'm gonna maybe subdivide it twice, maybe three times, just to get a high resolution mesh. Now, obviously there's other nodes that already do what I'm going to show you, but I just wanna illustrate the example that you can do basically the same thing in VEX or in VOPS, okay? So imagine you had a point wrangle, which this node here is going to give you a VEX expression. This is going to enable you to be able to do something that you want with code, okay? So beforehand, maybe what I could do is just drop down an attribute noise. I'll turn off the material here so you can visualize the color. So here with our VEX, what we could do is say, hey, with this color, if we look at our geometry spreadsheet, we've got a color RGB. Any B values, we're gonna, we're gonna look at those values. So first I could say float RGB is equal to at cd.b, or you could say cd.z, either way, access it. So this is typing a little bit of code. Um, we could just say at cd is equal to B, and it's going to set the color to all of it's going to set the color to the blue value, but we don't necessarily need to do that because right now all I'm really wanting to do is peak the normals or displace this pig head based on the B value, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, hey, my position at P is going to be plus equals, so I'm adding to the position, the value of the normal, and if I middle mouse click here, we don't have normals explicitly there, but when you type it in VEX, Houdini will calculate a normal for the points because we're running over points. So we're gonna say at normal times the B value and then times a channel float molt. And if I create this parameter, what we can do here is then make this one, okay? So we see that it's displacing this geometry based on the B value, okay? So that's an operation. That is a basic operation that we wanna do here. Now, I'm gonna say this value is 0.25, and there we go. So we did a little bit of code. Now, if you know how to code and you like to make super complex code or different things like that, this is where it's useful. I like doing things like this. However, say you want a no-code solution. Say you're kind of not looking to code in Houdini. That's okay too. You can do it. Let's drop down a point, VOP, and show the VOP example, okay? So if I dive inside if I go inside this node, we now have more of a visual editor. And so you can treat these as nodes, okay? So these already come with some values or attributes that Houdini typically has on the geometry, okay? So in our VEX example here, we accessed the color and the normal and the position, which are all gonna be accessible here. Say you had to access a custom attribute, you could just type a bind node and then set whichever attribute you're trying to pull in. But basically, this is a new context of VEX Builder where we have to import the attributes we want to access. So let's replicate what we did with our code here. So the first thing we did was we created a float value B based on the third vector value, okay? So we can access our color here and we can type vector to float, all right? So this breaks up the color value. And our third value here is gonna be B. So I'll just drop down a null 
we can say that is our B value, okay? So we have literally done that first line of code. That's the same thing. So now all we would do is we need to then add the normal times B and then times a multiplier. So I can grab my normal and what I'm going to do is drop down a multiply node here. So I have my normal, I'm multiplying it by B and then remember we had a multiplier. So I could either drop down a constant and set that constant or better yet, I could drop down a parameter. Now this parameter, if I call this mult, we can then plug this in here and it's a float value. And if we dive upside here, we now have that parameter right here. So we could set that to 0.25, dive inside here. So all we have to do is finish our code, which was at P plus whatever this was, because we just set that up. So now if I put down an add node here, I can then take this result, add it to my position. But then in order to complete the operation here, I have to now export my attributes. So this is an output. Now standard, it has P, V, force, color, and normals. If position wasn't here, we could just do a bind export, okay? So if you have any custom attributes, bind and bind export are what you're gonna wanna use if you can't find them here, okay? So now all we do is the sum of this is the new P, okay? So now if I drop down a switch node, I can show you that they are in fact exactly the same. The only difference here is um, here a normal was being set. So if I attribute delete this normal here, we're actually gonna show up with the, the same thing because it was calculating the normal here before this position happened. So you would technically have to recalculate the normals and Houdini's doing that in the viewport here. So as we can see, we get the exact same result, whether you want to code or whether you want to visually code, I guess you could say. So that is the difference between VEX and BOPS inside of Houdini and they are basically the same thing. If you found this useful, I want you to go check out my website, Parameter 3. I'm just getting started. So at the time of this recording, I only have one course, but you can sign up for free and receive a weekly newsletter where I give Houdini tips and talk about 3D news and workflows. I wanna add more content in the future. So if you enjoy the way I teach, it's actually super valuable for me to receive feedback on what you'd be interested in learning on a paid format. Please shoot me a message if you have something you wanna learn.